she was my auntie. She was one of my best friends from school. Chantal was my daughter. She was my next door neighbor. She was my little sister. She was my mum. Janelle Duncan Bailey, 25. Akua Agiman, 32. Anastasia Voikina, 23. Suzanne Newton, 45. Myrna Kirby, 57. Virginia Jaquina, 49. Debbie Levy, 44. Samantha Medlin, 24. Kenny Metti Hotti, 42. Alexis Dorrance, 42. really annoys me when something happens to somebody how suddenly they become the most genuine lovely wonderful person in the world when not everybody can be does that make sense but this girl like so real so clumsy and dopey she was so dopey wasn't yeah. she yeah the things you she used to come out with oh no you were like did she just definitely you say definitely that? just said that in the middle of town in front of everyone <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I knew her from working with her in the care home. I remember when she first started, then obviously like I wear fake tan and stuff, and she was like, oh, let's go shopping. And she spent about £100 on like fake eyelashes, fake tan and everything. And then whenever we went out, I'd always have to like fake tan all her legs. And then she'd always get drunk and spill her drink and then she'd have white lines all down her legs. <laughs> that used to make me laugh. When she was 19, Kirsty had a baby girl called Brooke and began raising her on her own. How did she meet Mark? He literally just knocked on her door. He just got out of prison the day before. She told me that wasn't it like he beat somebody up or something, wasn't it? And I just thought that's not really someone that I want my best friend to be with, like somebody like that. Suzanne Cole, 54. Jennifer Rennie, 26. Denisha Arthur, 30. Pamela Jackson, 55. Deborah Simister, 45. Lisa Clay, 40. What do you think that Kirsty saw in him? What was he like? No idea. Absolutely no idea. So different from any other person, boyfriend she'd ever had. In what way? He looked a mess. Absolute mess. Scruffy, long bushy hair, tracksuit bottoms all the time and T-shirts. Not her usual type at all. Did you get the feeling that Kirsty was in love with him? Yeah. Kirsty was, like, besotted with him, mm. even though it was, like, literally, like, a week, two weeks after. She was just, like, fascinated by him, even then. Kirsty started to drink quite heavily with him. Mm. Where she always drank socially before, um, she was drinking more than what she... what you'd call the normal. Did he steal her card and go and buy drugs with it? Yeah, bank sure, card. Yeah. Still went and bought drugs with it and spent all of her money on drugs so she couldn't do the food shopping and that's what the money was for. But she was also very worried that when he went out, he was going to leave her forever. And that he was never going to come back again. Yeah. That's what she... She, she really panicked about that. Mm. If he left, that was it. He was never going to come back. 
and she'd ring him a hundred times mm. just to make sure he was coming. So he really had a hold over her, didn't he? Yeah. A massive, massive hold. There is a trench at 40 and Junella Valentine, 34. Eddie Kayat the day, 46. Gabrielle Stanley, 28. Josephine Steele, 45. Did she ever say that he'd been violent towards her? No. No. Um, I was seeing marks on Kirsty. Um, and she told me that they were play fighting. I remember when she come to work once and she had like these little marks on her arm there. And like I said something to her and she was like, oh, I just burnt it on the oven, but you could see that they weren't burnt. So, and I kind of just like brushed it off. I thought maybe, you know, she was just like messing around with Brooke or something. I didn't think anything of it. Sorry, I'm going to cry now. Oh, that made me <laughs> Do you want, Anna? <laughs> no, my makeup's ruined. Great. And that's not honest. Do the eye blow. Do it. No, you have to do it like this. And blow up. Why did you confront Kirsty? She went mental at me. Absolutely mental. And she didn't talk to me for three weeks. I told her so many times, if these problems were happening this early in the relationship, it was just best to end it. Which she always agreed with me. But each time took him back. In the summer of that year, she became a lot of time tearful. Down. She lost a lot of weight very quickly. Um, she just looked worn down. By September 2013, Mark had been living with Kirsty and Brooke for nine months. Was Kirsty quite isolated by then? She had really lost everybody. Like they had an argument, and he was like, I'm going to like, make sure that you've got nobody. Like you're going to lose all your friends, and that's what happened. Yeah, that is what happened. Like, she did literally just lost everybody because of him. Catherine Sanderman, 40. Rida Zinunab, 21. Jade Watson, 22. Paula Newman, 20. Tracy Topless, 47. Carol French, 73. Aisha Allen, 49. Brooke told me that he was bashing, as she put it, mummy with a knife, <laughs> and kicking her while she was on the floor. She told me that he was telling her to get up, you whore. She then told me that he changed his trousers and then put washing on. He left and locked the front door. Brooke was seen at seven o'clock at the window beckoning to a neighbour. But the neighbour thought Brooke was just waving. Brooke managed to open the back door at half past seven that morning, climb over a fence that was very high for her and was seen by a neighbour standing in the alleyway. Brooke told the neighbour that Mummy was dead. And what she saw that night, no child should ever have to see.
Nika Inayat, 52, killed in a fire set by her husband. He planned to prevent his daughter from going ahead with a marriage he felt would dishonour the family and killed his wife in the blaze. Farhanda Yunus, 30, stabbed in Manchester by her husband while her six-year-old son slept next door. I used to tell him when I was little that I just hated him because I just didn't want to be left alone with him. I'm not sure what it was. I just didn't feel safe around him. Can you tell me what life was like at home with him? If Mum went out even to take Nan shopping, get a phone call every two minutes, where are you, where are you, when are you going to be home? I don't think her phone was ever not going off. Just seeing where she was all the time, just not trusting at all. Because he was possessive? Mm. Controlling over everything. Just wouldn't really let us do anything that he didn't want us to do. So he was a bully? Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. Did your mum tell her family about her problems at all? No, she wouldn't really tell anyone. I think the only person she really told is me, and that's only because I was there. No, I don't think family knew anything. I think she just thought he was a bit weird, but may as well just carry on. Because I always told her to leave him, and she always just said, I don't know what he'd do if I did. She said that? Mm. In August 2013, after 25 years with him, Anne-Marie decided she could no longer tolerate Lee's behaviour. What was his reaction when she said that she wanted to end the relationship? He just said that he's not going to let her leave and that he'd rather die or her die rather than him being alone. He was just stalking Mum constantly. He wouldn't leave her alone. If she was walking dog, he'd be just behind her or overlooking a cliff so if she was on the beach. When we drove to school, he once was in a scream mask and a costume holding up a sign saying, I love you, waiting for us to drive past. We called the police on the first night that he went crazy and we kicked him out. That was when he was threatening to kill her. We were always calling the police, because she did get a non-molestation order. She went to the court and set it up herself. And then after that was in place, they just said, call every time he was near. So we did. Heather Arthur, 50, stabbed in Newcastle by her husband of 30 years when she told him she wanted a divorce. Salma Parvey, 22, and a bank clerk strangled with a scarf by her husband in Coventry when their marriage brought down. Christine Baker, 52, strangled by her husband of 20 years in Newcastle when he discovered she had been unfaithful. It was just a normal morning. I just got up for school. When we went in the front room to get my shoes on, Dad jumped out of the pool house and ran up the end of the garden, jumped over the fence. So Mum called the police straight away, and then she was on the phone to police as she was driving me to school. So last time I saw her, really, she was on the phone to police. There was an appointment that had already been set up for that day at six o'clock, and that's how the call was left, that she would attend uh, six o'clock that evening. And obviously nobody could have foreseen what was going to happen during the course of that day. We know he walked along the coast. He walked to where he knew that Anne would be, by his reckoning, was there about 10 past 12, waiting to meet her. I think he said that he tied a rope round her head and then hit her over the head with a big branch and then tied it up more, kissed her, said he loved her and then drove away. Once he killed Anne, we know that he took the dogs back that she was walking to the owners. He then went from there to a local Asda store in Broadstairs, where he went to the 
toilets and wash the blood and mud off himself. And then he went from there to a pub and had two and a half pints of beer. And then from that point, he went to the telephone kiosk phone the police. OK, there's been a murder in Convent Road in the field. Please go and get her. Can you tell me your name? Lee Birch. Lee Birch. Her name is Anne-Marie Birch. How do you know this has happened? Because I killed her, it's my wife. Hindsight's always a fantastic thing, isn't it? But it's just such a massive leap from, you know, harassing someone, even persistent harassment, to that, it, the ultimate violence that you could meet out to anybody. Nothing would have stopped him. And he actually said that in an interview. It wouldn't have mattered what um, orders I'd been given by the court or conditions I'd been given by the police. Nothing would have stopped me. Why did he kill her? He just couldn't imagine not being with her. He was obsessed. Obviously, you love your family and you love your wife, but it was obsession. He just could not bear the thought of being without her. Margaret Knight, 77. Margaret McCatty, 63. Yvonne Walsh, 25. Fatima Bostiani, 43. He was a very good man, very happy, jolly type of man, very helpful man. He would ask anyone if they need help for pick and drop or anything. He was a kind man. He was a kind man, that's how I know him, yeah. In 2000, Muhammad Ali, owner of several shops, met Amina Bibi, known to her family as Asiya. After his first wife passed away, he met her through a friend. They both, both of them went to back home Pakistan, and uh, the friend took him to one of his uh, family friend house. That's how he saw Asiya. And he, it was like love at first sight, call it that way. <laughs> he had a word with, the, with her parents and they simply agreed because he was from London and they said, this is a good opportunity, let's get the daughter married to him. Very simple, very simple girl. She wasn't educated. She could hardly speak any word of English. Did she want to marry him, do you think? Well, she had no choice, I think. She was a nice wife, nice mum. She was, overall, she was a good lady. What were the qualities that made her a nice wife? She used to make a dinner for her husband, whatever he used to say. She used to look after the house. She used to look after the boys, keep her house nice and tidy, and, uh, yeah. She was a good, obedient wife. She was, yes. Yeah. You said that when she came, she came from a very poor and simple family. Mm, that's right, yeah. As time passed in England, did her attitude change? It did, yeah. It did change as she seen everything, money and freedom and everything. She wanted this, she wanted that. She wanted a house built in Pakistan. Did he build her a house he in did. Pakistan? Yeah, he did. He used to look after her quite a lot. So when you saw her getting more greedy for money yeah. in a way, what was your reaction, Rizwana? Uh, that too much greediness is not good. Did she become more powerful in the marriage at that point? As the year passed away, yes. Like, become a boss of the house and control of the house, control financially. The husband used to ask for even small amount of money, like five pounds. So he had to come to her to, her to ask for some pocket money? That's it, yeah, <laughs> pocket money, yeah. Yeah. Was there any indication that he wanted to end the marriage? 
No, I haven't seen any indication. No, he was quite happy with her and the boys. He, the boys were very close to their father. And even she was quite close to him. I haven't seen anything. It was like a very happy house, happy family. That's what it looked like from the outside. That's it, yeah. So you don't know what's going on behind the closed doors, do you? Barker Rani, 24, strangled in Warsaw by her husband when she discovered their arranged marriage was a cover for his homosexuality. Gemma Finnegan, 24, strangled and stabbed in Tyne and Weir by her mentally ill boyfriend who believed she was possessed by the devil. Marion Vita, 48, a mother of one, stabbed in Glasgow by her husband of 19 years after he discovered she was having a lesbian affair. Neighbours say she was beautiful, kind and quiet. Amina Bibi was often seen taking her two sons to mosque. But in September last year, her life was cut brutally short by two men. Frederick Best, a drug addict high on crack on the day he killed her, and her husband, Mohammed Ali, who paid Best a £100 deposit to stab her in a fake burglary. On the morning of the murder, Best and Ali met briefly. Ali took his younger son to school. Then Best let himself in with a key Ali had cut for him, and Amina Bibi was stabbed 72 times. What do you feel about what happened to her? I feel very bad. I feel very, very bad. She was brutally murdered. This is not a nice way to do. Not a nice way to end the relationship. This is not the solution, no. He should have divorced her, got separated from her, or could have done anything but not killing. No, this is not the solution. No, not at all. Muhammad Ali is in prison serving 24 years for murder and Rizwana is raising the two boys. Sabine Sandy, 37 and mother of three, pregnant when she died, strangled by her jealous husband in Forest Gate, East London. Shivani Kapoor, 35 and mother of one, Strangled in Middlesex by her husband, a gambling addict who worked for Morgan Stanley. Girls, are you normally this peaceful and just playing quietly together? No. What are you normally like? We usually we like, like arguing. And arguing. Do you argue a lot? Yes. Have you always argued a lot? Yes. Yeah. Mm, sort of. Yes. The answer's yes. And what did your mum used to say when you used to argue? Um, she used to say, be she quiet. She just said, be quiet. Or, and Dad used to send us on the naughty step. What did you call her? Blondie. She was what you'd call a typical dumb blonde at times. My mummy likes this colour. This she likes pink and purple. She likes pink vests. and purple mess. That's why I'm using purple. And I've done a heart pink and purple striped. Oh yeah. Um I'm doing this. Fully purple. She loved the girls. She thought the world of the girls. She'd do anything for them. She used to love them kids to bits. She actually loved him to bits. She actually what? told me that one day. What did she say, Stuart? She said that <laughs> he used a, uh, a certain <laughs> uh, shower gel. And it smelled like chocolate. And she said, <laughs> He got out at the shower the other day and I love him that much, I could have eaten him. He's absolutely gorgeous. 
So we, we never thought this would happen. Is that a picture of your mum there? Uh, yes, um, it yeah. is. There it is. That's my mum. There you This one. Can you point to your mum for me, Isabel? There. No, are either of you in that picture? Um, just Isabel. And me. There. <laughs> and teeny. Chantelle met Stephen Barnsdale Queen in 1998, when they were both working in a nursing home. Things moved very quickly, really. They didn't seem to have been together five minutes before he'd moved into Chantelle's house. He had no friends. Uh, strange. I nicknamed him Billy Nomates. It was as if he didn't want to leave Chantelle on her own. Was he ever physically violent or abusive to Chantelle that you were ever aware of? Not that I'm aware of, no. Not at all. Not physically, no. But uh, he used to check her Facebook messages. He used to check her telephone. He was in control of all the financial things, you know, uh, uh, He'd have Chantal's bank card and if Chantal needed money, he'd go to the bank and he'd get the money out. I cannot imagine how she allowed money to be spent without her knowledge, uh, debt to be built up without her knowledge. After 14 years together, Chantelle discovered that Stephen had secretly run up considerable debts. The family house was repossessed and they were rehoused by the council. What we didn't realise at the time is that he was hiding mail again, he was hiding letters underneath the units, the dining room units, underneath the spare wheel in the car. All odd places that you wouldn't expect to find mail. So the debt was building up again and he was concealing it again? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Stephen had used a one metre length of uh, chain that's used for hanging baskets that he bought from B&Q two weeks earlier. He'd used a hair bobble to connect that, put it over her head, insert a rolling pin and start to tighten the chain around her neck. This was described by the pathologist as a Spanish windlass, which is basically a mechanism where when you turn it, it stays in the, that position and then you can turn it again, so you're tightening it all the time and obviously it would stopped to breathing. I know about this piece of chain because Chantelle showed it me and she said, Stephen's bought this chain, he's going to hang some pictures up with it. And he never did it. So whether he knew when he bought it what he was going to do with it, I don't know. Why did he kill her? We don't know. We don't know. We're assuming that it was all about money. <laughs> Do you know how old she was, your mum? At 35. And if you think it's weird, her, young, her younger brother is turning older than his oldest sister. If it's a bit weird if you actually think about it, and it's a bit, it's really, really weird and confusing. What have you told them about what happened? We told them that Daddy had killed Moy. We didn't tell them how it had happened, but one of the neighbour's children told them that Daddy had strangled Mummy. And they don't ask questions beyond that? No. 
Do you miss your mum a lot? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like really hard. And what about your dad? Do you miss your dad? A bit, not a lot, but I don't miss him. It, cause, um, I, I hate him. I don't miss him that much. Dimitrina Borisova, 46, stabbed 17 times in the street in Sheffield by her ex-boyfriend who had lost a custody battle over their two-year-old son. Victoria Rose, 58, shot dead in Wiltshire by her ex-boyfriend, a retired police inspector, who then shot himself. She was very cheeky. <laughs> We were always very close. She was always the joker of the family. When she hit teenage years, she became a depressive. What age did that happen? <clears throat> um, well, when she was in school, she sort of fell in with the wrong people when she was about 15, 16. Um, and she didn't do very well at her exams <laughs> because of that. Um, and I think from there, she just, her behaviour got worse. Was she depressed to the extent that she was diagnosed with depression? Yes, yeah, she did. Um, not, not straight away, but as the years went on, she was diagnosed as a depressive. And then it was only very recently, probably about a year before she died, that she was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Do you know when she met? Stephen Williams. I think they worked in a bar. She used to do bar work sometimes. She'd have different bar jobs. And I think they'd met in a bar at some point, but they hadn't got together. But she was only seeing him for about three weeks before he stabbed her. And we didn't even know she was seeing him. All she wanted was to find someone and be in a relationship and be loved. So that's why she was always head first into everything. And she'd already said to her friend that oh, she was really happy and he was lovely and he might be the one. And because that's, unfortunately, that's what she did. <clears throat> and I think he saw that and took advantage of it. Jane McRae, 55. Judy Beatty, 24. Rosemary Gill, 48. Alexandra Kovacs, 25. Jean Redfern, 67. Keisha McKenzie, 28. message on Facebook from one of her friends saying to me, oh my God, what's happened? I've heard Joe's been airlifted to hospital. And I said, what, what the hell? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So I rang mum and dad and they said that the police had rung them and said, but they didn't tell them what happened. We all thought she'd, Joe being Joe, she'd got drunk and got into a fight or some, or she'd been self-harming. I said, I don't want to start panicking until, you know, we know what's happened. And I think the police got there at Mum's in the afternoon and Mum rang me and said, the policewoman wants to have a word with you. And that's when she said, oh, your sister's been stabbed a number of times. and you might want to come and see her. They basically were saying that we don't know if she's going to make it. They thought they were going to have to amputate her arms because the wounds were so bad. So we got straight in the car and went straight to the hospital and met Mum and Dad there. 
we all thought she was going to be okay because she was awake, she was lucid. Um, well, I said, well, who did this to you? And she said, oh, it was somebody I know. He's called Stephen Williams. She said they'd had a row in the evening and he tried to rip a radiator off the wall. So she told him to leave. Um, and she said he'd flipped and got a knife from the kitchen and started to stab her. And he sat with her for five or six hours, waiting for her to die. <sighs> At one point she said she remembers taking like a really deep breath and he said, oh, will you just fucking die? The next day was the Sunday we went back in to see her in the afternoon. She was awake again. Um, she was obviously on a lot of morphine. Um, but she was being Joe. She was joking with the police officers. Um, they were taking, trying to take DNA from under her nails. And she was <laughs> joking with them, saying, oh, watch that nail, because I picked my nose with that one. <laughs> she was just being Joe. On the Sunday, we finally spoke to someone and they told us, you know, how serious it was, but they sort of said, well, you know, she's out of the woods. Um, but, yeah, we all thought she was going to be OK. But then the next morning, we rang the hospital and they said she'd had problems breathing and she was getting distressed, so they, they had to sedate her and put her on a ventilator. And she never, never came out of it. Lena Giza, 29, Anil Kapoor, 27, Mayorati Parinpa Mori, 32, Caroline Perry, 49, Michelle Giles, 43, Judith Mould, 57. Describe your mum's personality to me. She was a bubbly, friendly, outgoing person. She enjoyed helping others. She was really caring. She'd do anything yeah. for anyone. Yeah. Can you describe your father's personality to me? Controlling. He's... He's not a very nice man. No. I always spent a lot of time with my dad. Like, I used to go to rugby with him every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. I used to come up my bumps a lot to see the animals. He used to take me out on the horse on the weekends if we didn't have rugby. I was a lot closer to my dad than my other sisters. But you were a daddy's girl. Yeah. When you were little, what was it like being around him? I'm walking on eggshells, I didn't know what was going to happen when and how he was going to wake up, what sort of mood he was going to be in. Did he have a temper, Sophia? Yeah, like, most of it was, like, from where he'd work himself up and he didn't know how to, like, let his emotions out and then he'd just, like, let them out, like, through, like, throwing a cup or something. Like, it wasn't abuse, like, a domestic abuse. It was nothing like that. It was more, like, taking things out on objects close to him rather than people or anything to hurt someone. He pulled TVs off the wall, through microwaves, through windows. Most serious things, he lit the house on fire whilst Samira, Sophia and my mum were in the house. What was your dad's job? Um, he's a builder. 
And what was your mum's job? Did she work? The jobs that she did have went for a long periods of time because he would be controlling her. He'd hide her shoes, which she couldn't go to work or hide the car keys. He put an app on the phone, so whenever she had a text, it'd read out the name. Or whenever she got had a phone call, it'd read out the name, so he knew who she was speaking to. Well, it would speak the name out loud? Yeah. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but she stayed with him for quite a life. It's hard to move your family away from what they know, what they surround, you know, their school, their friends. She was trying to do her best for her kids. In 2011, Calvin's behaviour became increasingly erratic and he made the decision to leave the family home. He still had control of my mum because um, we still lived in the house. He'd come up in the morning about 8 o'clock, make sure she was up from bed by making her a cup of tea. And then he'd come back during the day then whilst he was in work and after work. Mum knew that he was still controlling her. My sisters are making out to be like 10 times worse than what he actually was. He used to come up, he used to light the fire, make a cup of tea, go and sort the dogs out, do any work out the back. So I don't think that he'd put himself in that situation nowhere. And if he was just controlling it, that he'd have to go and do all that just to keep an eye on it. Rima Ramzan, 18, beheaded by her boyfriend with a kitchen knife in Sheffield. Rania Aliyed, 25, murdered by her violent husband after she left him fearing for her life. Her body has never been found. Lilimar Akta, 27, murdered in Birmingham by her estranged husband, nine years after their arranged marriage in Bangladesh. A man from Bridgend has been found guilty of murdering his wife by strangling her with a dog lead. Asia Newton was found in the bedroom of her home in Pencoid last July. Do you think that he planned to kill your mum? No. I think like it was a inst like out of the blue thing, like an argument kept me went to do something and then it just happened like it it was too late before you could do anything. Do you think that your father planned to kill your mother? Yeah. Yeah. Cuz she was going to be happy. She was going to have a life without him and he didn't, he didn't want, want that. He realised that his control was slipping on her. She was a possession and I believe that he felt his control was slipping. Zanita Kinziska, 32. Asma Begum, 21. Lindsay Ashton, 25. Hello. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's the Good. What's been doing then? Making anything? Uh, a bench. Oh, is it? Yeah. My birthday's coming up around. The best make something for that. You best get thinking. <laughs> you, know, you, do, you don't want a jewelry box, nothing will do. Well, I got one. You made me one. Can you explain where Sophia is now? She chose to live with Calvin's family. We just find it so disrespectful. After all, we've been through, not just my mum as well, but what all we've been through and she decided to side with him. We don't want anything to do with her. One minute on Facebook, she'll write about my mum and how much she misses her. But then she'll write how she's in contact and talking to, to Daddy Bear and... He's the one that's done this. He's the one, the reason my mum's not here today is because he's murdered her. It's, she just doesn't make sense. Like, I don't understand why someone would want to be in contact with someone that's murdered your mum. He's still my dad. I can't switch off my feelings like maybe my sisters have. Like, I can't do that. I won't forgive him for what he's done, but he is still my dad. 
Right. Well, I'll have to do it, won't I? Yeah, I'll have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> got Jim Rowe, though, I'm now. I'll leave you going because I got college as All well. Right, Love you. Love you, tra. Yeah, tra. Tra, tra. Hello, Jim. Kate Dixon, 40, Cambridge graduate and manager at Islington Council, stabbed in South London by her ex-boyfriend when he found out she was seeing another man. Denise Williamson, 44, stabbed in Nottinghamshire by her fiancé, who tracked her phone calls and emails, paranoid she was having an affair. Her body was found by her 17-year-old autistic son. What relationship was Chloe to you? She was my mother. And what relationship was Aris to you? He was my stepfather. She was very stylish, her hair always looked great. I've never seen her come and ever have a bad hair day. Her clothes were lovely, she always looked good. All her stuff is neat, look at the drawers. There's her night dresses, look there, look, there's her night dress. Huh? All still folded up. She was so neat and tidy. She was very friendly, very warm. She likes chatting. She likes to have a cup of tea. So you would have Always. a cup of tea with her, yeah, would you? Whenever she sees me, come and have a cup of tea with me. I had to drop everything working and then go to her, yeah. Roughly how old was your mum and how old was Aris when they met? Um, I think he was 35 and mum would be about 46. But that's Aris there when he was, when they got married, their wedding day. That's their wedding day. There. She never changed much, actually. And the Bella. Annabella. Did he have a job? <laughs> no. Did he ever have a job? Mm, maybe casually, but not, not properly. No, my mum provided. I didn't warm to him. I felt that he was up to something. After mum had only been married to him a few weeks, he went off with an 18-year-old to Greece. So it confirmed our suspicions that he wasn't a nice person. Was he ever physically violent towards that? Yes. Once we were in Greece, um, he was driving and he something happened. My mother told him to watch something in the road and he turned round and he hit her in an eye and he had this big sovereign ring. So, you know, he was violent. He had hurt my mother. One day she was locked out. She didn't have the key, so she knocked at my door. And then uh, I came with her, and then she knocked the door. He came down, and literally, I think he slapped her, you know. He slapped her in yeah, front of you? Yeah, he slapped her, pushed her, you know. How he was a very strong man, very strong man. Yeah. And I think she, she had to go to the hospital for that. Yeah. She wanted to keep it to herself, not to the police or anybody, you know. I mean, that's where she has gone wrong. 
right from the beginning she should have told the police but uh, she kept quiet don't know why was she a proud person yes i think she would have been quite sort of not ashamed that's not the right word but maybe a little bit embarrassed to tell her family the extent of what was going on Gail Lucas, 51, and mother of two, attacked in a car in Leeds by her ex-partner, who ignored court orders to stay away from her. Irina Morovich, 21, stabbed to death in south-east London by her husband, who feared deportation to Afghanistan if she divorced him. In 2008, Chloe ended her relationship with Aris. They divided the house into two flats and Aris moved upstairs. He started to become deluded, paranoid deluded, and um, he said that there was an assassination plot, that her brothers were um, colluding to get him killed. I wanted to take my mother away from there, but she wouldn't go. That was her home. She wouldn't leave. When was the last time that you saw your mother? December. Did she mention Aris at that time? Well, he was looming around, but uh, he didn't look well. Did he go to the doctor? Yes. They took two x-rays. Um, the second x-ray showed cancer. And this is what triggered everything off. This is what led up to my mum's murder. Julie Connaughton, 57, attacked with a hammer in Chesterfield by her husband of nine years when she filed for divorce. Jane Wigget, 57, strangled in Cheltenham by her ex-husband, who had been violent towards her throughout their 30-year marriage. I saw the flame and I took the phone and I came quickly outside and rang 999. Hello? Hello? Fire brigade. There's a fire, a big fire on Salacourt uh, Avenue, N12. Please come quickly. What's on fire? It is the whole thing is burning, the house is burning. Right, can you get outside? Uh, I'll, co I'll come outside, it's my neighbour. Do you know Please. if it's... Okay, the fire brigade's on the way. Do you know if Please. there's anybody... Just, okay, just... Hello, everything is burning. Please, come quick! What I understand, um, what he did, was that I don't know if he came up m at Mum from behind, but there was mention that there was a towel on her head. I think maybe he put the towel over her head. Blunt force tra trauma on the head. Broke her jaw, slit her throat. And then he put her on the floor. He put all pillows and different things round her. He doused her with petrol and olive oil. And he turned off all the fire alarms and he tried to set the gas so that the, he was hoping to explode the flat. Where was he found, Muron? Um, at the top of the stairs. Um, if he actually um, hung himself, and he the rope broke and he fell down. Why did he kill her? Why? At spite and malevolence. Basically, that's it. And I think he always thought that my mum would die first. He thought, well, if I'm going, you're not staying. End of. Why should she go like that? She didn't deserve to go like that. You know, we're all going to die at one point, but she should have gone in comfort with her family there. She was, you know, she could have lived another 10 years more. 
she was healthy. That there was nothing wrong with her, you know. Just, just wrong. Betty Gallagher, 87. Lisa Banks, 46. My whole life has changed now. I went off the rails massively. I went out and I got in trouble. I, you know, I got in fights and arguments and I just turned into a complete and utter mess. And are you all right now? I'll never be OK. You'll never, ever be OK. And has it made you wary or mistrustful of Everyone. boys since then? I'm like it with everybody now. Yeah. I don't really trust anybody. And do you think it will have affected your capacity to have a relationship? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Yeah, I didn't realise. It has, isn't it? Annie Beaver, 81, killed in Hampshire by her husband of 40 years. Both were suffering from dementia. Sharon Hayter, 54, beaten to death with a claw hammer by her husband, who also killed her disabled daughter. Poonam Kumar, 35, strangled in Southall by her husband, who then hanged himself. Look at them daffodils. Mm -hmm. They're pretty. Here they are. Springs like that coming. heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell her you brought her a drink. Mummy, I've brought you a drink. She liked to have a drink of vodka, didn't she? You'll do it. You'll do it. That's it. There you go, Shanks. <laughs> She's drinking it, you can tell, can't you? Yeah, it's going down, isn't it, now? She must be enjoying that drink. Yeah. Do you think so? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jaden Parkinson, 17. Victoria Adams, 22. Mona's Ruffy, 48. Kerry Power, 36. Janet Lockhart, 29. Shamim Gabriel, 33.